what do we have here? We have this little guy. Actually, and to bring him into this package, I think it's because because of, of the input. But <clears throat> twenty twenty one, he actually he wouldn't show up in my package manager. So if you try to bring this guy in and you're in a higher version and you don't see him, I had to actually go to a lower version and another package, install it, pull the folder out, dump it on my desktop, and then dump it in here. Now it's in here. But <clears throat> I'm using the new input system, so the logic on this Hero Knight isn't going to work. But we don't want it to work anyways. We want to rebuild that with Playmaker, don't we? Yes. Yes, we do. Why, yes. That's exactly right. Thank you, me. No problem. So, <clears throat> there, there's a pile of things that we need to do, no doubt. Uh, I'm just kind of playing around right now, and I think, I think the first thing is, <clears throat> if we want this character to move, there's various things we need to do. So, if we maintain the animator that came with this controller, which we can do, and we can add on to it, we can modify it, um, which is fine. We just we just need to know what these states are and what they do, right? Uh, like no blood doesn't really matter. Uh, that's <coughs> a demo thing. I'm gonna delete that. Um, <coughs> but we have wall sliding. We have rolling, jumping. Is grounded. Uh, this this state is the movement. Zero is idle. One is to move. Um, airspeed Y, which is how he's doing the falling. <coughs> and then there's all these sensors. So I'm, I'm going to get rid of the sensors. I'm not going to have those. And we're going to build an FSM. And this one's starting off to be a U utility FSM. It's going to do a pile of things. One is on the ecosystem there's a thing called circle cast and it's like ray cast uh, actually well it's, it's more like sphere cast which is like ray cast but it's got thickness to it right so if you go to the browser you can find circle cast there and if you don't have that uh, go to the playmaker welcome screen uh, go to the add-ons go to the ecosystem browser or it should take you to the website and you can download it and install it anywho circle cast all I want to do is I want to shoot down at we'll say for that and a distance I don't know for how long but we're just gonna go like that and we're gonna store is grounded I also want to do this by layer, so uh, the player, I'm going to stick on a layer called player. This this tile map, I very briefly just kind of painted some crap on. Uh, nothing special about it, uh, but I, I gave it a collider. And I'm going to put this on a layer called ground. Uh, if you don't have it, you can just add it. It's, it's just a layer. Nothing special about it. So, back to this utility thing. If we now layer mask one and use ground, we can only see ground. We can debug, but the debug on the circle cast sucks. At least that's what I've gathered from it. So, <clears throat> if I play, now I can see grounding is true. And if I lift them up a bit, it hits false roughly about there, which is way too high, right? Um, so let's bring some of these down, right? And that's still way too high. So point zero one. Even that's still a little high. Hmm. So, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to add a child, and this thing's going to be our ground checker. All right, and the, I'm going to raise this up a bit. I'm going to put it roughly about his, his knees. And 
in preparation, I'm going to put a square here. And you're probably like, why the hell are you putting a square here? And, and you'll, you'll see. Uh, it's just because I want to make sure the ground checker is working good. And I also don't want a box collider. I want a capsule. I think, I think a capsule is nicer looking. And it offers a few extra uh, things for us. So I am just going to shrink it down until I'm kind of happy with it. Again, it doesn't got to be perfect. You know, something like that. Roughly covers him. And back to the utility now. Let's let's go from the ground checker. I need space world. And now let's see where we're at. So it should be right. So now it's it's true. If I move the Harrow Knight up, it turns false pretty quickly. Which is pretty good. That's that's pretty good. Thing is, <clears throat> the idea of the circle cast is we want it, it's shooting a ray with width. So if I actually go to this guy and I make him ground as well, I want to make sure that I can hit this thing. Not when I'm touching it like this. But when I'm when I'm kind of in it a bit more. So I'm going to come up a bit. So Okay, so we're false here. Like we're not touching the ground. And if I come over, it hits true there. Right? And that's so that that ray is like out to here on both sides shooting down. And that's way too wide. So let's now try this. See there, true, which is pretty good because we're inside the collider bit, and that's that's fine because we we don't want to we don't want to walk, or if we're up in the air and we hit a wall, we don't want to be hitting this wall and it saying we're grounded, right? So so we want it inside our capsule just a little bit, right? I mean I could even bring that down a little more, but uh, we lost this a bit, so I just need to extend that out. sure why that's all of a sudden not uh, well that, that's weird now did I put that square in the right thing that okay so let's bring this out a bit more all right it's just acting really really weird unless the ground checkers face is just really messed up but we should be in world so whatever because ground checker should be I wonder it's almost it's almost like they're flipped wonder why that is. Right, because that's true there. So if we're at 0.5, and that's true. And if I bring this back some, it's almost acting like it's a sphere cast. You know what? So be it. Let's just move it down until it hits. So here, here, we're false. We come in a bit. 
were true there, which is fine. And for, for the amount we're going into the capsule is good. So I'm just going to take this guy and just drop him down until we're hitting true. Okay, and then so that's it. Just needs to go down just a touch more because we we want a little bit of give, All right? So that's pretty good. So we're at 0.25s, and this guy's at. I don't know why he's there at 0.22. Alright, so 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0.25. There we go. So now we know the ground checker <coughs> is good. Now, once it's there, I don't need to debug. Let's set animator bool. Uh, we have a grounded, and it's going to be is grounded every frame. There. Now we have a ground system. Done, just like that, right? The other thing we want to do is get velocity 2D. And we want the Y. Every frame uh, world-wise is, is good. And we want to set FS or set animator float. Move to the bottom the airspeed y to the y velocity every frame <clears throat> so what that does is now we now we know when we're grounded and we know when we're moving up in comparison to when we're moving down right because if i take this guy and i lift him up and i drop him see how he's going to his fall and then just to the land just like that right pretty simple Right, so this is kind of like a utility thing, and that could almost be just a template, but I'm going to leave it just like that. We're going to close it up and forget it even exists. The other thing we're going to need now is in the input system, because I brought in the input system, I also brought in the universal UR or universal render pipeline. In the input system, I brought in this custom binding composite, which gives you some free kind of setup, I guess you could say. And what that is, or what that'll do for us, is if I now say, let's give ourselves an input component, because that's part of the system, I can now select one, and we have this. And this is the one that came, uh, that's part of that sample package. So I can say, okay, that's what we're using. Cool. Now, if I want, I can actually go to this, and I can see these are all the actions that were came with it. Now, with that said, this one I made, and this one I made, right? So, th so these are all. This is what came with it. So you have all the UI stuff, the submitting and cancel, which is great because I'd rather have that put in now for me than having to build that crap. And then we have the basic moves, and the way this one's built is the left stick on the gamepad and the WASD. And so forth and we have a look and we have a fire which is based on left mouse button so I think we should have a jump we'll put a jump back in and maybe jump we're gonna go to a binding and say we want uh, space the space bar that's why that's our jump now because of this character, let's put in a guard action. And the guard is going to be, um, you can also do listen. Like if I say listen, and then click the button I want, which is actually gonna be right mouse button. There we go. It's right mouse button. <coughs> which is a pretty cool feature for that. So I have auto save on. If you don't have that on, you'll have that. Either way, save it, All right? Because now if I go and look at our player, we can see everything here. There's that guard, there's that jump, everything's it's caught up to date. So we want an FSM to control that, to move, right? So let's get or input, uh, no, let's not get a move vector. Let's get a vector two. Get rid of the move vector. So we, what we do is to hit this and we say, okay, here's our actions. We want the move, which is the WASD or 
the other things that go with it. And we're going to take the x, float multiply, and we're going to multiply the x by, I don't know, we'll say 6. And then set velocity 2d, move this to the bottom, and I'm going to zero that out and do that. So these are, those are both none, I'm just using the x. So just that alone will now give us movement. And maybe six is a little fast, right? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do four. Now, <clears throat> we also want uh, sprite flipping, obviously, and we need to be able to move, which this is that, that state, right? And the easiest way to do that is a thing called uh, absolute or float abs. So if I do that on the X, but I'm going to do it after I set velocity. So I multiply it, I set velocity, uh, then at the end I'm going to do that. Because I, I, I don't want the absolute to happen for the setting the velocity. Right? <clears throat> and what absolute does is it forces it to be a positive value, no matter what. Right, so if I come down here now, oh, no, it's, it's, it's not gonna let us do it that way. All right, so, so be it. We will set float Do we want to do it this way? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. So we're going to take this, a new variable. Uh, we'll call this... What are we doing? Uh, oh, yeah, for that. The movement. The, the animation. And we're going to set x into it and then we also want to we're going to make another one we're going to make two of those and this one could be velocity which will also be from x so we're, we're more or less taking our x input and putting it in we're taking the x as the raw and we're adding we're making two other variables from that x so now I'm going to take the velocity times it by 4 and use it in the set velocity. But I'm going to take the admin uh, and absolute that and use that for the set float. So now we have, we can go either way, back and forth. And the end min oh and apparently I did that wrong oh I did airspeed it's not what oh was that an int set animator int There we go. Yes, Athena. Hey, um, my name is Dog Blacksa. Yes. The dog likes to bark. All right, so we're just going to convert it and use an int, not a float, apparently. <coughs> Which is fine. It's whatever. So now we should have... There we go. We are moving. I mean, it looks kind of sad and needs to be sped up so four is obviously Dina turn that down let's go back to six oh 
There's our problem. There's our problem. We're, I'm, I'm still using the axe for the velocity. I need to use the velocity. All right, yeah, that makes more sense. And of course, now it's now it's too high. So let's bring that down to a three. How does that look going this way? That looks pretty good. I think a three is good. All right, so now we need the flipping. All right, so the flipping, I'm gonna put that into the utilities. And I think the way we're going to want to do that is I'm going to build a FSM and it's going to be input, get the vector 2, and we're going to use that same movement and we're going to store the X again. And we are going to float compare. So if we are moving every frame if the x is greater oh, greater than point 0.1 we're going to do a thing called flip and we also want to set sprite flip there we go and i'm going to copy this whole state paste it over here so we can go over here and we can go back but this one we're going to flip it so this one's not flipped, this one's flipped. The other thing is this one needs to be negative 0.1 and not greater, but less, right? So if we're greater than 0.1, we go over here. If we're less than negative 0.1, we go back. If we're hitting at zero, we're just gonna stay wherever the hell we're at. Now I might have that flip backwards, we'll find out in a second. Yes, we have the flip absolutely backwards because that's the way I roll. So let's flop. Let's flip the flips. So we flip the flip. And now we have. Now we have this. There we go. Pretty cool. So that works. So let's template that. <coughs> hero flip. That's what we'll call it. Flip the flip, the hero flip. And I'm going to delete that. We're going to go into our utility and I'm going to run it in here. It seems like a utility style thing, so hero flip. Let's stick that in there. There we go. So that's all done. The next thing we need now is a jump. And we know jump is based off a trigger. Okay, so uh, this one here is like our movement. So this is the one we want to use. We want to input button event. And this time we're going to use jump. Where's jump? There's jump. And if we jump, if it's if it's pressed, let's do a jump event. Okay. Bloop. And we're going to set animator trigger. To jump and then we also want to add force or set velocity even uh, we don't want to use that we're just going to use the Y but we're also going to maintain the X and let's go like 8 hopefully that doesn't rocket us to the moon and then I want a tiny weight not too long but it's very important we have it because if we don't have it we're gonna get grounded right away right so we're just gonna finish to this weight quarter of a second right you might need to up that you know oh geez not three seconds 0.3 seconds <clears throat> once we're there get FSM bool and bool test so we want we want to get from our utility, the is grounded every frame. And if we're grounded, if that's true, we have landed, right? So frickin' land. 
there we go. Now, the other thing is we also want copy, paste this down here. Because if, actually no, we, we, don't, we don't want to base it on the is grounded. Well, yeah, I, I suppose we could, right? Only not landed. Now we can do to a, a fall. Right, so we fall, we can just go back here. So let's see what that looks like. Right, so here we are, now we're here, we hit jump, and let's unselect things so I can see it. See, that's pretty good, right? Uh, now, our velocity for that jump over isn't very high. And that's because I used the wrong freaking thing, I used the X, I'm supposed to use velocity. There we go. Oh, see, we're not grounded. And that's one thing that we need to make sure that we can do. So we need to see why we're not grounded. Right, because it's false. And did I move this thing by accident? No. the square oh yeah you know what square isn't the proper there we go you, you know if you change layers and you're shooting for certain layers make sure to set things to the proper layers all right so now we have a little thing so <clears throat> we don't have to worry about those changes there but we do need to worry about this square being on the proper layer to start with let's just fix that so the what's the other thing we want <clears throat> We also want attack. So let's input button event. And let's use the fire. And if pressed, let's attack. Now, in the way this works, if you look at the animator, there's three attacks. We have uh, this one, now let's close this, Boop. and we have this guy, and we have that guy. So we could either run those in a sequence, a combo, Does I don't know, it, it, we could do random, So, but they all use a trigger, right, attack one, two, and three. So we need to figure out how do we want to do that. So if we attack, we could, um, let's say, set int, no, let's do an int switch. And this will be our attack. Which right now doesn't exist, so we're going to need to make it. So we have, uh, we'll say, well, we'll go one, two, and three. Right? One, two, and three. All right, so we have that. Now, if we attack here, we're going to set a trigger. to attack one with a little weight. Doesn't gotta be very long. I think we can attack pretty fast and finish and come back here. And if I copy that, just paste it down a few times. All right, let's line that up so it's a little prettier. Now this one we can swap over to attack two, and this one we can swap over to attack three. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well, what the hell? What about this thing? So the first thing I'm gonna do is default the attack to one, or else we're gonna have issues. Now, if we go to one, what we could do is 
int add attack, we're going to add one. I'm going to copy that, set it here. Then, Athena, turn that down. Set int value to, z to one. All right? Now that will be some sort of memory thing, more or less, because now it's going to be like, hey, we attack this one. We're back. So what we want to do here is I'm going to make another FSM. And this one, we're going to do something a little special in. We are going to take an integer, which is going to be the attack. And it's an input. Uh, and it's an output. Okay. And we are going to int compare. And if attack is equal, no, if it's greater than one, um, we're going to do this event called timer. Like that. And if that's the case, then we want to. I'm going to bring this back over here because it, it might change. Um, actually, no, we don't even need to worry about that. All we have to do is do a wait. And let's say we wait. Uh, let's say points. Now, let's do, a, let's do a full second. All right. And then if that's the case, we can now set int value attack to one and that's it okay let's save that as reset attack uh, remove that let's go into our move and in here we can now run f s m to reset attack and we can now do the attack as attack and attack on both of them so what this should allow us to do is if we attack relatively rapidly we get a combo right and it'll just keep repeating but if we go into the combo uh, for two, if we're out of the combo for too long, which is going to be a second, right? Like, say we'll stop on this guy right there, right? So we stopped. Now, if we attack again, by this logic, we should go here, but we're not going to. We should, we're going to go up to back up to one because we've waited in here for a second, right? So now we're only attacking a one. See that? But if I attack rapidly or half decently rapidly, and you, you can adjust this. The times of that all you want right so there's kind of a neat little <clears throat> combat thing and I think we'll leave it at that so we should probably end the video here because I don't want this thing to go on way too long and now that we have jumps and attacks I think in the next video we'll we'll look at more of the health the getting damaged the death uh, the rolling, the wall slide, um, yeah, and that will finish off this controller in that aspect, in the ways of control, and then we're going to start working on a damage system and so forth.